The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. My name is Dave and in today's episode, we're gonna take a look at this little guy. Here's a combination out of R2-D2 and Johnny 5. I started with building two robots, but at one point I put on the head onto R2-D2 and was like, wait, that's just one robot to work on. So for this video, I thought it would be nice to make it fully functional so that everything works together very well and also get started on voice recognition. Sounds good? Well, then let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So let's talk about the robot while I take it apart. The robot has two motors that are used for steering the robot. Then there is a battery, a double cell battery that I've made myself. It is connected to a power board that has a six volt converter. The motor driver is a DRV8835 motor driver. It is all connected to an Arduino Pro Mini. There is an ultrasonic module that I've um, taken apart to use for the eyes, but it was functional. For the eyebrow mechanism, I used seven servos in total. The servos are connected to a PCA9685 I2C PWM module. There are 24 LED neopixels used for the eyes and the mouth. That's everything I've connected to the body right now. The only thing that I have working at this point is that when the robot sees you with the ultrasonic module, it will drive towards you. And that's about it. There's no servo movement and there's no way to control it otherwise. So we're about to change that. So let me tell you a story about how not to design a power board or power supply board. My plan for the robot was to have a board that has a 6 volt regulator for the motors, a 5 volt regulator for everything that needs 5 volts like the Arduino and such, and then a 3.3 volt regulator for, well, I don't know, maybe sensors. I had two different kinds of regulators. For the 6 volt I had a 7806 version and for the other two voltages I had an LM1117 or LM317 regulator plant. They have different pinouts. Especially interesting is it when you have cooling aluminum parts that um, that you want to screw on to your regulator. So when the terminal for one regulator is ground and for the other two it's their voltages that they are regulating to, you kind of want to um, be careful about that because if they touch you have a short. Let's just see if no shorts are <laughs> the cooling plate also touched some of the pins of the prototyping board and those were connected to other signals or other voltages as well. So <laughs> when I finally connected everything, the whole board was just a mess. I basically went back to the old board where I cut off some pieces, resorted them and used that as my power supply. And I also put in the driver for the motor again onto that board. So yeah, I wasted a whole day for that. So until now, um, the only thing that was really working was the ultrasonic sensor. I used it in that way. So when you put your hands in front of it, it would the robot would drive towards you. That was quite okay for the kids at the Maker Faire in Berlin. It was interesting to see some kids were trying to move the robot backwards by holding the hands behind the head and some were trying to steer it. So I thought when I use two infrared sensors, distance sensors, one on each shoulder, I thought maybe I can make it possible that this motion would actually steer the robot. And this is uh, what I came up with.
Let's talk a bit about the servos that I've used. Um, these are plain old, good old SG90 servos, the, the weak ones with the nylon in it. I thought it would be nice to have a feedback from the servo. I soldered on the fourth wire to the um, variable resistor in here, so I know what the servo is seeing. When I start up the servo, then I also know where the servo is. I then went from there and started some teach-in behavior and set all the servos to the right positions and got all the variables to yeah make it. At one point, I noticed that I can't really use the servos with the driving mechanism and the NeoPixel library together. So with that information in my head, I had to go back to this module here um, that it was on the old robot. It was on the old robot, but I had never used it. <laughs> in the end, I had to recalibrate every servo with the PCA again. So I don't have any smile positions. I have two positions. That's the sleep one and the one where it opens its eyes. So I think we have everything running here. Um, the servos work, the LEDs work and power is all figured out and it can drive and see when you hold the hands up. So the next thing I want to tackle is controlling it with voice commands. And for this, I decided to use the Matrix voice shield on Raspberry Pi Zero, oh, sorry, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. The Matrix voice is basically a shield that has a lot of microphones on it and a lot of LEDs and they are controlled by the FPGA made visible for the ELSA for the sound system of Linux um, yeah it's just recognized as a microphone or an input device and this is used for the snips.ai you could use a USB microphone as well but I think the sound quality should be better with eight microphones than one because the Raspberry Pi is very power hungry, I'm gonna use it as a base station. I don't want to draw even more current from the battery that's already driving the servos and the motors for driving around. With MQTT, you can make clients that subscribe to a topic. And in this case, the topic is Hermes slash ASR slash text captured. My plan now is to make an ESP8266 based device that will connect as a client to the MQTT server running on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so I got the um, script running on the MQTT servers. All right, so uh, let's test it. Hey Snips, move forward. Let me check, so it's in here, but it's not in here. Hey Snips, move forward. So, okay, we have that. Let's try the one that has more information in it. So I don't see it in the topic list in that case. So maybe the message is too long. Ah, oh, crap. Why me? It seems like the messages um, for intent and text captures are too long for the ESP8266. So I have to write some code to make the messages shorter because when I send out messages that are shorter, it gets red on the ESP8266. Hey Snips, move forward. Hey Snips, stop. <laughs> hey Snips, move backwards. Hey Snips, stop. Hey Snips, stop. That was quite something. It took me longer than I um, expected and definitely longer than I wanted um, to work on this little thing. But now that everything is kind of working and um, kind of on the Yep, I did it tight. I'm much happier and I gotta admit this project was very nerve-wracking for me. Um, I started the project the, the wrong way. I started with um, the idea and then not planning it out and actually seeing what the microcontrollers can do and what I wanted to have. You, you gotta make plans if you want to 
have a robot. So with most of the things that I've used, it was actually very sensible to use five volts. I'm pretty happy with what I've done, like making the Raspberry Pi base station, but it's fair to say that it's not really a Raspberry Pi controlled robot in that sense, because it doesn't take over the functions of controlling the servos and controlling the motors. In the end, the robot moves when I tell it to, and there are some other cool functions that I can now build into the robot because I now have a kind of base for it. I can add a controller that is um, controlling the robot over um, Wi-Fi. There are a lot of possibilities with this robot still to uncover. One thing that bugs me is that it doesn't speak. I tend to forget to add that to projects like speaking or having melodies or adding speakers. If you have any thoughts or ideas about this project or if you have a board that basically does everything that I had to do with an Arduino and all the other chips, connect over the community, Element 14 community, and I'll see you there. If you want to share any of your robots, um, also come over and um, say hi. That's all we have for today. I wanna say thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.